Hello and welcome to this video on SSRIs, which stand for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. In this video, we're going to talk about its mode of action in depression, uh, mechanism of action, a condition in which it's the drug of choice, contraindication, adverse effects, and then serotonin syndrome. Serotonin and depression. What is serotonin? Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. It's released into the synaptic cleft. What is a synapse? A synapse is a connection between two neurons in which the exon of one neuron releases particles on the dendrite of another neuron. So what are these particles? These particles are the neurotransmitters. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. Different type of neurotransmitters have different effect. Serotonin is related to depression. How is serotonin related to depression? It has significant effects on the automatic emotional response, meaning how you respond to things becomes better. They re people react more positively, more happily to things. That leads to a positive change. In, order in, uh, in addition to that, these are just some physical things. These are some physical changes that have been studied with more serotonin in the brain so that there's hippocampus, that's a part of the brain, proliferation and then neuroplasticity, meaning uh, brain basically proliferates and brain changes in response to something. So neuroplasticity proteins increase in number. These are the changes that serotonin has in the brain. What's the mode of action of SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors? So if you focus on the word itself, what does that mean? Selective, meaning they selectively uh, affect on some things. What do they affect on? Serotonin. They selectively act on serotonin. What they did, what do they do? Reuptake inhibit. So they basically inhibit the reuptake of selectively only serotonin, only serotonin. That's what they do. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The name itself is very descriptive. They increase the serotonin in the synaptic cleft. We talk about the synaptic cleft. It's that gap between the connection between two neurons. So that in itself is the mode of action of SSRIs. So this is the synaptic cleft. As I said this earlier, this is the axon of one neuron, the dendrite of another neuron. So there's something, there's a channel known as 5-HT3. 5-HT3 is another name for serotonin. So they block this channel. They inhibit this transporter. So let's talk about the clinical use of these medications, of SSRIs. So they're indicated as first line for both major depressive disorder, MDD, or generalized anxiety disorder. So you might have a case, you might have a question in which the patient presents with a, with a feeling of loss of interest, sleep disturbances, decreased appetite, uh, suicidal ideation, that's a case of major depressive disorder. And now they might ask you, what's the drug that you will prescribe? What's the therapy that you will prescribe? And you will say for SSRIs. And the same goes for generalized anxiety disorder. So the patient might present with you with a more generalized worry about thing, an impending, impending sense of doom that something bad might happen in the first time drug for generalized anxiety disorder. Now, these are the sort of questions I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand what sort of questions might present. And they will ask you that what's the right kind of pharmacological therapy for this disorder and you will, uh, you will select SSRIs in these drugs. Other, other disorders include anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder, premature ejaculation disorder. Now this is something we'll talk about premature ejaculation disorder and why it's useful in this particular thing. Contraindication, hepatic and renal failure. So in patients with hepatic, this is not in, uh, in particularly uh, renal failure, this is not necessarily on contraindication, renally adjusted doses can also be prescribed. So epilepsy and manic phase particularly of the bipolar disorder. Now this is important for you to remember because in a patient, so the patient might present to you in a clinic in the depressive phase of a bipolar disorder and if you prescribe an SSRI, you might precipitate a manic phase in that particular patient. So we need to be careful about not to prescribe SSRIs when in the depressive episode of a bipolar disorder and you need to take history of that patient very carefully if they have episodes of mania, of impulsivity and in those phases if you if you think that the patient might have a bipolar disorder we go for mood stabilizer instead of SSRI. So remember in bipolar disorder you need to be careful not to prescribe SSRIs because they might pre precipitate 
a manic phase in the patient. Now, before we go on, you need to remember the names of these medication or have an idea of what the names might be. So for that, I need you to remember these two pictures, the picture of these two teens here, these two teens and this baby sitting in a pram. So the story that you will need to remember at, are, is that these teens are going to a prom in a pram. Now, usually uh, teens might go in a limo, but these particular teens are going to prom in a pram. Now, let's see how that might relate. So the names of these medications usually have teen in the end of them. So teen, sertraline, uh, phloxetine, paroxetine and sertraline. Sertraline you're going to remember in your rotations very easily because it's, it's a very commonly prescribed drug. So in mnemonic, so teens are going to prom in a pram and that's another name for a stroller which is the which are the other two medication acetalopram and citalopram so that's how you're going to remember the names of these medications it's a funny mnemonic but it might help you remember these drugs on the exam day now let us talk about the adverse effects of ssris that selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors gi distress this might be very very distressing to the patient as the word says itself weight gain the patient might be concerned about the way they look SIDH hyponatremia is an important concern and then sexual dysfunction which includes anorgasmia decreased libido and erectile dysfunction now I, I told you that this is prescribed for uh, something known as a premature ejaculation disorder and now this is why exactly it is prescribed and this is a very very common adverse effect for SSRIs and might be very very worrisome for the patient. Now let's talk about serotonin syndrome. This is a very very important adverse effects of many many medications including selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors which are commonly prescribed. So a case of, S, uh, of serotonin syndrome. A 30 year old man is brought in by family into the emergency room with complaints of fever, abdominal pain and delirium. They see that the patient has been talking about weird things, about weird magical things about starting right now or an hour ago. The attendant tells you that the patient was recently started on linezolid for right arm cellulitis. On examination, the patient has hyperreflexia and angle clonus. The vitals, temperature is high, heart rate is high, blood pressure is also high, or something known as hypertensive urgency or emergency because the patient has some uh, symptoms of, you know, end organ involvement such as delirium. Respiratory rate is high. The patient is a known diabetic and has been taking sertraline for generalized anxiety disorder. Now, the things that I want you to remember is that he has been taking sertraline, was recently started or lenazinib, right? So this is a common pre presentation on serotonin syndrome. It, start, it acts by the use of serotonergic medications often together like SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors which are SNRIs and tricyclic antidepressants which all increase the amount of serotonin in the synaptic cleft. And then other medications including lenazolid, the patient that we just discussed was just recently started on linezolid and he had already been taking sertraline. So that's interaction between two drugs increases the amount of serotonin. MAOI or monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Monoamine oxidase is an enzyme that breaks down the dopamine, norepinephrine and serotonin. So uh, I'm going to make a video on that too. So stay tuned for that. MDMA which is a drug which is commonly used that also increases that stimulant that increases the amount of uh, serotonin in the synaptic cleft intentional overdose of these drugs so what is SSRI or SNRI prescribed for depression anxiety the patient might want to end their life and might overdose on these medications it might present with an intentional overdose clinical features 
dysautonomia what is dysautonomia dysautonomia means an aberrant activity a faulty activity of the autonomic nervous system what is the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is the balance between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system what do they do sympathetic nervous system is the flight or uh, fight or flight response increase the blood pressure increase the heart rate increase the respiratory rate we're going to fight with this that's the sympathetic nervous system the parasympathetic nervous system which is the rest and the digest part of your brain it it's like chill calm down i'm sitting in my room i'm making a video you need to calm down you need to be cool that's the parasympathetic nervous system you disrupt the balance between these two you have hypertension you have tachycardia you have diaphoresis which is basically increased profused sweating dysautonomia very common feature mental status changes confusion delirium what is what does uh, what does the medication what do these medications do they they mess up the level of neurotransmitters in your brain obviously you'll have confusion you'll have delirium neuromuscular hyperactivity tremors clonus hyperreflexia now this is something that you definitely need to remember this is something by which you will differentiate serotonin syndrome from other syndromes such as neuroleptic malignant syndrome or malignant hyperthermia and the antidote for this is ciproheptadine the antidote for serotonin syndrome is ciproheptadine now how are you going to differentiate between neuroleptic malignant syndrome and serotonin syndrome on the exam day the onset of neuroleptic malignant syndrome is 1 to 3 days the onset of serotonin syndrome is less than 1 day very quick onset altered mental status and dysautonomia in both of these that's something similar how are you going to differentiate you have rigidity in neuroleptic malignant syndrome you have clonus in serotonin syndrome what is clonus clonus is when uh, you dorsiflex the patient's angle clonus in particular when you dorsiflex if this is towards the patient face you dorsiflex the clonus you uh, the ankle of the patient and then you let it go and it's it's it like tremors or it it moves by itself that's clonus so you have hyporeflexia in nms and you have hyperreflexia in serotonin syndrome then malignant hyperthermia malignant hyperthermia differs by its onset malignant hyperthermia usually occurs by the use of inhaled anesthetics and also succinylcholine i have a video i have a video on both malignant hyperthermia as well as neuroleptic malignant syndrome so if you want to watch that you can go to my channel and i'll add a link in this video as well now let's quickly talk about the summary of ssris serotonin is a neurotransmitter ssri inhibit the reuptake of this neurotransmitter ssris are first line for generalized anxiety disorder and mdd or major depressive disorder adverse effects include sexual dysfunction precisely why it's prescribed for premature ejaculation disorder and weight gain sidh serotonin syndrome is a very very important adverse effect that you need to remember thank you so much for watching this video this video is a part of our series on psychiatric pharmacology so if you want to watch the rest of those videos please go to my channel subscribe and press the bell icon and if you want to if you want me to make a particular video on some topic write in the comment section thank you so much for watching